Before we get into today's stories, visit dreadsarmy.com to sign up for the Dread Weekly newsletter so you don't miss out on any updates. Also, check out all of the channels in the Dread Network on dreadsarmy.com or in the description below. Thanks for listening. Now let's get to the stories. From the onset, I really loved Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado. I began my park ranger service there in the spring of 2018. Picture vast green meadows, densely wooded forests, and the sweeping faces of grizzled cliffs. It was the kind of place that had an allure of mystery and wonder that always made me feel like I was living in one of those historical novels I'd spend hours reading when I wasn't on patrol. Being a park ranger, there was more than just a job to me. It was a passion that stemmed from an intense love for nature. I've always loved the wilderness, camping and trekking through national parks since my childhood days. I always figured caretaking for one would be the best way to preserve the kind of places I'd spend my autumns, springs and summers exploring. On that particular day in early November, it was mild and calm. The sun was just starting to set, which painted the sky in striking hues of orange and pink. It was one of those scenes which, if you didn't pause to admire, you'd regret missing. My usual routine revolved around patrolling the trails, helping out tourists with directions, and on rare occasions dealing with any disturbances. Beyond that, a significant part of my duties lay in conserving the flora and fauna of the park. That day, my plan was to pay a visit to an area that had been reported for some possible weather erosion. As the evening grew darker, I hopped in my trusty old Ford Ranger, set the radio to the nearest weather station, and set off on the winding dirt road towards the site. It was a pretty typical night. The park, generally quiet, was not showing any signs of troubling activity. The tourists had gradually thinned out as darkness fell, leaving the park almost eerily silent. All you could really hear was the occasional croaking of a night frog, or the rustle of small nocturnal critters in the underbrush. As I drove deeper into the park, the gravel crunching under the tires of my truck, I couldn't help but get absorbed in my own thoughts. Little did I know then that tranquility was about to take a chilling turn. Suddenly, the familiar sound of the dirt crunching under the tread of my truck was replaced with an odd, softer, squelching noise. I brought the pickup to a halt and grabbed my flashlight stepping out onto the road to take a look at what I'd just driven through. The smooth wash of my headlights barely reached the edge of the road, but with the added spotlight from my flashlight, I saw a series of huge footprints matted deeply into the dirt. Something big had lumbered through here recently, and I'd driven over its tracks, leaving an ugly skid right through the middle. I evaluated the depth and size of the prints in the dim light figuring maybe a bear had wandered too close to the tourist paths. Just as I was about to return to the cab, something caught my ear. An almost human-like grunt echoed across the trees, drowning out the nocturnal symphony around me. It was then that the hairs at the back of my neck stiffened. That was no bear sound. I radioed in, my thumb pressing hard against the talk button, as if it could keep my heart from pounding its way out of my chest. Stashing the radio back onto my belt, I thought it best to try to identify the source of the noise. I felt this primal fear creeping its way up my spine, but as a ranger, I knew I had a responsibility to investigate, especially if this thing was potentially a threat to any late night wanderers. The echo had come from the direction of Spruce Tree House, one of the historical landmarks of the park. As I cautiously made my way down the trail, the smell hit me. It started as just a hint of something stale, moldy almost, and evolved into a putrid odor that wrought images of rot and decay. The beam of my flashlight illuminated the narrow trail and stopped at the base of a colossal, hulking figure that turned and glanced back curiously. The light caught on the glossy brownish-red fur of the creature and drew a giant outline against the darkness. Paralyzed with awe and fear, I caught my breath the beam flickering across a face that held more expression and humanoid features than any animal I've encountered. 
Set deep inside its large head were dark piercing eyes, a prominent heavy jaw, and chiseled cheekbones that were covered in that hair. The creature was massive, easily over eight feet tall with a bulk that suggested immense strength. My mind wrestled with primal fear and dumbfounded awe. Part of me screamed to run, to retreat and call for backup. The other half wrestled with the acknowledgement of coming across such a rare entity. This was a Sasquatch, I knew that much. With a loud, guttural growl, the creature turned toward me. I think it wanted me to leave. That was a notion I had no trouble accepting. Adrenaline took over then, and I turned on my heel, sprinting towards the direction of my truck. What occurred next, I could barely remember. It was a blur. The dash back felt like minutes instead of seconds. Through it all, I felt oddly grateful. My knowledge of the park and the survival skills it had conditioned me with had been a saving grace. When daylight greeted Mesa Verde, I was back at the ranger station, silent in my relief, reflection, and utter exhaustion. The park had changed overnight for me. The place I had admired for its serene environment was now tinged with a sense of fear and the unnatural. But was it unnatural? Or merely, I had stumbled upon a truth that was hidden within the woods. I now knew that even amidst the calm meadows and cliff dwellings of Mesa Verde, unseen mysteries roamed, and it is these encounters that reminded us, humans, of what a small place we occupy among the vast wilderness. I've been a park ranger at the First Landing State Park in Virginia for the better part of a decade now. I've got my routine down pat. Show up right at dawn, do a quick check-in at the office, grab my gear, and head out on patrol. It's quiet, serene work. I get to watch the world wake up. Wildlife here is pretty usual. We have deer, foxes, even the odd bobcat, and of course, a whole lot of waterfowl. But, well, that one particular day. Now, that was different. I was out on one of my regular morning patrols, lacing up my boots and getting started just as the sun was beginning to break the horizon. I just finished a run through the campground making sure no fires were left burning, no trash left out to attract the bears, the usual stuff. I was heading back toward the main trail, thinking about getting a cup of coffee to help shake off the morning chill. When I heard this sound, it wasn't like anything I'd ever heard before. It was a sort of hiss or maybe a whisper, mixed with the rustle of leaves and a faint, distant echo. It sent a chill down my spine, strange enough that I remember frowning, wondering if there was a rogue piece of machinery left out or something, even though all of our equipment was safely stowed away. There was nothing unusual to see though, just your typical early morning mist rolling off the river nearby, but the sound persisted, soft and eerie. Keep in mind the wildest encounters I usually face involve some overly excited park tourist hand-feeding the wildlife, or a child losing their baseball in a thicket. Suddenly, the trees around me began to sway, rustling as if a stiff wind was blowing through them. But there wasn't any wind. I looked around and just on the edge of my vision, I thought I saw something, a sort of shimmer in the air, like heat rising off the pavement on a hot summer day. That's the best way I can describe it. But it was barely dawn and still quite cool out. Walking towards the shimmer, I could hear my heart pounding in my ears. I've experienced bizarre things in the park before, but nothing quite like this. It gave me a visceral sense of unease, a dread that twisted my stomach. It felt wrong, unnatural even. As I got closer, I was hit with a sudden, intense cold. I mean, it was near freezing, if not lower. I could see my breath in front of me. Still, I was determined to figure out what was going on. I'm not the type to run headlong into trouble, but I'd be lying if I said my curiosity wasn't piqued. Irrespective of anything else that happened that day, I truly felt like I wasn't alone out there. Everything in me was screaming to get out of there, but there was also this strange allure, a magnetic pull that was both intriguing and terrifying. I'd always been the type to walk away from danger, but some part of me wanted to know more. To find out the source of that noise, that strange cold, and to see if either of them were connected to that thing. So I pressed on, shivering and wishing for that cup of coffee now more than ever. 
Just as I was considering turning back, I spotted it through the mist. I saw this shimmering form again. It was a figure of some sort, but it sure as hell wasn't an animal. That I'm sure of. It was transparent, almost like thick fog shaped like a person, standing at the edge of the woods. But the weirdest part was the eyes. Whatever this thing was, it had eyes glowing faintly like twin lanterns from underneath a veil of mist. I'm no believer in the supernatural and I've experienced enough strange things in the wild to know that it's easy to mistake harmless natural phenomenon for something more sinister. But I swear that thing looked right at me. I've never been more certain about anything in my life. It was there one moment and gone the next, like it was swallowed up by the mist. Even after it vanished, that haunting whispering sound and the bone-deep chill didn't abate. It was as if the forest itself held its breath. For a moment, I was frozen to that spot. Panic edged its way up my spine and lodged itself firmly in my brain. Then, reviving my ranger training, I collected my wits about myself and backed out without turning around. That ghostly figure might have disappeared, but I sure wasn't about to find out whether or not it would return. When I was far enough away from the spot, I finally dared to break into a jog, then a sprint, racing back towards the ranger station. I've seen many strange things in the wild, but nothing that unsettled me in quite the same way. Nobody believed me. I've been asked if it was some kind of prank, or if I'd perhaps ingested a substance. I hadn't. Later, I'd go back there in broad daylight, of course, if only to confirm to myself that I hadn't been dreaming. Not a single trace was left of my encounter. No signs of disturbance in the grass. No weird temperatures. Nothing. Whatever it was, it was gone now. Even now, I often find myself questioning what I saw and what I believed. Was it my imagination playing tricks? Was it a trick of the light? Or, if that figure was real, what exactly was it? Was it dangerous or just passing through? At the end of it all though, I've had to accept that I'll probably never get an answer to these questions. And honestly, I'm not sure I want them anymore. All I know is that since that day, patrolling the state park has felt a little less ordinary, a little less mundane. The barrier between the known and unknown somehow, that day, felt paper thin. And me? I'm left straddling between them the skeptic and the believer, forever changed by a foggy morning in the woods. I wouldn't wish this hanging mystery on my worst enemy. I worked for a while in Kings Canyon National Park, and boy, do I have a story for you. Most people don't realize just how vast the park is, or even how wild and isolated it feels when you're on patrol at night. I'll be honest, it's that tranquil solitude that drew me to this job. When you're out here among the towering granite cliffs, the ancient sequoias, and the wild rivers, well, it reminds you of how small and fleeting our human worries are. Unfortunately, that peacefulness that I so often enjoyed in this place was about to be disrupted by an encounter that left me with more questions than answers. I was on my rounds. It wasn't too exciting. I was tasked with making sure that camping restrictions were respected, checking to ensure there were no adverse encounters with the local wildlife, and most importantly, keeping an eye out for lost tourists who might have wandered off track. That happens more often than it should. I'd been a park ranger for about a decade by then. I thought I had seen everything, but never once had I experienced anything that falls into the unidentified creature category. But as I was saying, I was driving my pickup along the park roads, occasionally shining my powerful spotlight on the dense trees to catch the ethereal glow of a deer's eyes or to spot a mischievous bear foraging in the undergrowth. Oh, the number of times I've had to shoo those brutes away from the campsites because of people leaving food out. It was ridiculous. As I was headed towards the Cedar Grove area, something unusual caught my attention. My radio had started to crackle with static. Now normally this wouldn't be completely out of the ordinary. After all, we're in the mountains, reception can be spotty. But this was different. There was a hum, a quiet, low-pitched sound that somehow managed to echo even in my truck's cabin. Almost like the sound you'd imagine a massive transformer would make. I initially brushed it off, assuming some kind of interference. 
But as I continued patrolling, I got this eerie sensation. You know that prickling you get at the back of your neck when you feel like you're being watched? That's exactly what it felt like. The trees seemed unusually quiet. Even the usually talkative forest night critters were noticeably silent. The only sound accompanying me was the humming static from my radio. I pulled my truck over for a moment, killed the engine, and just listened. A momentary gust of wind rustled through the leaves nearby, but other than that, the silence was stifling. I felt the hair on my arm stand on end, and that's when I saw it. It was a flicker of light within the trees. There was something odd about that light. It wasn't the warm yellow of a camper's fire, or the bright beams of headlights or a flashlight. It was a cold, luminous blue, odd and completely out of place in our earthly woodlands. The hues shifted and twisted in a way that I couldn't quite put my finger on. It was as if I was looking directly at a bright star, but it was right there, in the middle of the park, and heavily shrouded by the sequoias. Intrigued, or maybe it was my ranger sense of responsibility kicking in, I decided to investigate. After all, mysterious light sources in a national park aren't really within our recommended list of recreational activities. Leaving my truck behind with my radio attempting to break through the relentless hum, I ventured towards the mesmerizing light. As soon as I moved beyond the clearing, the glow got brighter, illuminating the foliage around me. It was like something straight out of a Spielberg movie. My eyes naturally squinted in response, trying to make out the source while also avoiding the blinding glow. The eerie hum got louder each step I took. Then, above me it hovered. A stretch of gray looming overhead, shimmering with bands of strange, oscillating light. It had to have been at least 30 feet wide, maybe more. There were no definitive corners or edges. I wasn't quite sure what I was looking at. It just seemed to glide seamlessly into the air, like a piece of polished silver under the moonlight. Not a damn sound, too, other than that overwhelming hum, which seemed like it was resonating from deep within me at this point. I stood there. Too dumbfounded to be afraid, sort of numb really. I faced down a few angry bears in my time, and the anxiety I felt then was nowhere near the sensation coursing through my veins now. It was otherworldly, literally. In my trepidation, I managed to back out of the clearing, keeping my eyes on the object. It was static, like it had somehow halted the very concept of time in its vicinity. Then, as soon as I veered into denser forest, it took off, leaving behind not a trace. I didn't know whether it was safer to stay hidden or dash to my truck. This wasn't something we were trained to handle in the park services. This was so far beyond my understanding or control. After what felt like an eternity, the hum finally faded from my ears, and I dared to peek out behind the foliage. There was nothing, just the serenity of King's Canyon at night. It was as though the whole encounter had never happened. I took a few deep breaths, gathered my courage once more, and sprinted for the truck. I didn't breathe easy until I was safely back at the station. I spent the rest of my shift in a daze, huddled by the radio, trying to piece together what had happened to me. It's not something I'd talked about, not until now. People fear ridicule and people fear the unknown. And what I encountered that night was a combination of both. Some days I feel like I'd stumbled into an X-Files episode. Other days, I try to find logical explanations. Maybe a military craft I wasn't supposed to see, or the auroras playing tricks on my senses. But I've never really been able to convince myself. I know what I saw and heard, and although it churns my gut every time I recall those moments, I'm also oddly fascinated by them. I don't view the wilderness the same way anymore. It's not just the silence of the park or its towering sequoias that whisper ancient tales anymore. There's something else out there, too. It was the height of summer, 2017, and I was baking away under the unforgiving Texas sun. I was stationed as a park ranger at Palo Duro Canyon State Park. It was a job that usually meant spending most of my time rescuing wayward campers or cleaning up after over-enthusiastic junior scouts. I remember that day well, mainly because of Jimmy. He was Billy's kid from the supply tent, and he'd managed to get a family of raccoons stuck in the waste bin again. 
As the squeals echoed through the canyon, I laughed. What an absurd situation, and it wasn't the first time it had happened. Life was regular kinds of odd and untreated sunburn out here. So when the first reports came whispering in, speaking of a strange creature in the locality, I didn't take it too seriously. It was probably another case of overreacting tourists taking a coyote for a grizzly, or a stray dog for a wolf. You'd be surprised at how imagination flares in the wilderness. However, as a park ranger, it was my duty to investigate, regardless of my personal skepticism. Plus, it promised a break from Jimmy's shenanigans. The rest of the day passed in a blur of typical ranger duties, monitoring fire conditions, maintaining hiking trails, giving directions to lost tourists. It was the banality of my routine. As evening descended and the Texas sky was set ablaze with hues of red and orange, my radio crackled with the code 34 out, a signal used for unregistered animals or unidentified species. A couple camping near Hackberry Camp Area had reported a weird creature lurking about their site. Steering my ranger truck towards the location, my mind raced with possibilities. Could it be a panther, a bear, or perhaps a bobcat? Odd, I reckoned, considering the location wasn't particularly notorious for such disturbances. But working in the great outdoors teaches you to never say never. The dusk was settling into darkness as I pulled up near Hackberry. Armed with just a flashlight and years of ranger experience, the discreet sounds of wildlife were my questionable comfort. From a whining insect chorus to the occasional rustle or distant hoot, the night was a symphony of unseen happenings. Eerily, however, what first caught my attention wasn't the sight of anything out of the ordinary, but rather a smell. Fouler than anything I'd come across during my years of service, it was a concoction of rotten meat and wet dog. Add to that hints of burnt rubber, which seemed out of place in the heart of the wilderness. The stench was pervasive, seeming to seep into the very ground beneath my boots and claw its way up into the pre-dawn chill. As I explored deeper into the forest, a low growl echoed from the direction of a grove of Joshua trees, giving me pause. It was deep and resonating, far from the sounds commonplace in these wild lands. I found myself feeling as though I was entering uncharted territory, the atmosphere tangibly shifting into something more ominous. As I trudged forward, breaking through the undergrowth, I noticed peculiar signs. Boot-like paw prints unusually large for a native creature, and broken twigs hanging from branches too high up to be the work of small critters, signaling the presence of something substantial. The growling intensified as I neared a large, gnarled tree, whose shadow stood rippling under my flashlight. By now, my ranger bravado had worn thin, replaced by a primal sense of self-preservation. I should have walked away, but years of ingrained curiosity took the better of me. I inched closer, mentally kicking myself for not having my service pistol at hand. Angling my flashlight towards the rugged bark, my beam unveiled a creature that defied belief. Towering over me, it must have been about seven feet tall. It was the size of a grizzly, but with an outline eerily similar to a man's. Its body, muscular and hunched, was hidden under a layer of dark, coarse fur. Its beastly stature was intensified by powerful thighs, broad shoulders, and unusually long, jagged claws glinting ominously in my flashlight's glow. Its face, a haunting meld of canine and human, bore a pronounced brow ridge, a scarred snout, coarse whiskers, and furrowed brows over deep-set glowing yellow eyes. It's as if it was somehow both man and animal. Its gaze held mine, a raw mix of curiosity and animalistic warning. The sheer bizarreness of the creature sent my mind into a whirl, teetering on the edge of fear and fascination. As its guttural growl cut through the silence yet again, the reality pierced through. I was standing inches away from the mythical dogman of Texas lore. Paralyzed by the bizarre standoff, I don't remember how long we stood there locked in that gaze but the spell ultimately shattered with the creature's unsettling howl. It was a drawn-out, echoing roar, resonating with an animalistic fervor that sent a chill down my spine. The creature then turned and vanished into the trees, dislodging rocks and foliage in its hurry. With its departure, 
an uncanny silence took hold of the area, punctuated only by my labored breathing. Swallowed by the night, the terror of the encounter gradually subsided, leaving me questioning my sanity and the very nature of the world we comfortably inhabit. Was it a figment of an overworked imagination or a real creature of flesh and blood? And what was I going to tell those campers? My story isn't one of heroism or of a man conquering his fear. I didn't tell them about the dog man. I told them there was a mountain lion nearby and to get out. That seemed to work well enough. I can't imagine anyone would believe me. Not my supervisors and definitely not any of my friends. I never saw the creature again out there, but I have no doubt it is still lurking somewhere in the desert. I'm a park ranger at the Theodore Roosevelt National Park in North Dakota. Now being a park ranger ain't exactly Ghostbusters, but this one night, let's say, it made me reconsider the job description. I've always loved nature, you know. It's something I take pride in, being one of the guardians of the park. I remember it was a Tuesday, around the third week of October, picture perfect autumn day. It was one of the clearest nights I can remember. A lot of our work, although beautiful at times, can be quite routine, and I was doing the good old rounds that evening. I was mainly checking on the campsites and making sure the trails were clear. It had rained the previous day, and North Dakota's clay-rich soil gets pretty slippery when wet, a real nightmare for the weekend hikers. As I was patrolling, I'd occasionally stop to admire the scenery and watch the prairie dogs scuffling in the grass or the sudden rush of nocturnal creatures waking up as the sun dipped below the horizon. I had just checked on the peaceful valley ranch, ensuring no enthusiastic wildlife photographer had decided to stay behind, when I got a strange sensation. It started as a slight chill despite the fleece jacket I had on. I remember squinting my eyes in the deepening twilight, trying to adjust my vision. Something seemed off. The once vivacious prairies seemed unusually still. The hooting owls, the rustling grass, even the distant sounds of the Little Missouri River. It was like someone had pressed mute on the remote. Then came a scent, light and flowery. Perfume? In the middle of the national park after sundown. I wrote it off thinking some picnicker might have left a bottle behind. And it was spreading due to the evening wind. But the wind was calm that evening and the scent wasn't static. It felt like it was drifting, like someone passed by me doused in it. Next was a series of whispers. Yes, whispers. I turned around, expecting a troop of lost visitors, but I couldn't see anyone in the twilight. Yet, I was sure I heard someone. It wasn't like the winds carrying voices from the distant village either. These were close, like someone was whispering right behind me, a soft breeze carrying a single, indiscernible word. In my years as a park ranger, I have come across my share of weird experiences, but they mostly involved humans and their odd behaviors. This though, I was ill prepared for this. Up till then, I had passed off each odd occurrence as an isolated explainable anomaly. The chill could just be the weather. The silence was maybe the predators lurking about. The flowery perfume may be an actual flower. The whispers were just the wind, but one after the other, all in a single evening patrol. It's not like I haven't been around these parts at night before. I just couldn't shake off the feeling that something, or maybe even someone was toying with me. I was on the verge of steering my Jeep around and booking it. When out of the corner of my eye, I saw something moving. No, not moving, floating. I turned my flashlight in that direction, paling at the sight in front of me. There several yards away was a figure. It was a silhouette in human form, transparent yet vivid against the rolling darkness. Its lack of feet that should be touching the ground were replaced by tendrils of mist swirling around the air. It was in constant motion. A plethora of softer wisps danced around the more solid figure. I could audibly hear my heartbeat thundering inside my head, threatening to rip out of my chest. Strangely, though terrifying, it didn't seem threatening. It had a sorrowful air to it, the way it hovered there, the gentle swaying, like a sad, forgotten melody on repeat. I remember reaching out instinctively, not to touch it. 
God knows what would have happened if I did, but more as an instinctive reflex of something you desire to reach out to rather than run away from. The figure seemed to respond. It turned and faced my direction, or at least I think it did. It had vacant, hollow spaces for eyes, yet I felt an intense gaze, a connection that sent shivers down my spine. The whispers grew louder, and this time around I could make out a single word, help, then it was gone, just like that, disappeared leaving no trace behind. Only the soft smell of that flowery fragrance left to prove that it was not just my imagination. For a good ten minutes I sat on the jeep, numb, trying to make sense of it. Determined I circled the spot, aiming my flashlight in and out of the shrubs, as if the creature would pop a hand and say boo. But as you can guess, nothing happened. I spent the next two hours in the ranger's office fervently skimming through old records, matching the description that I came across. There were stories, ghost stories, if you want to call them that, but each one was different from the next, each more puzzling and mysterious. When I finally left the office, I had more questions than answers. The next few days were strange, not because of the encounter, but rather because of the lack thereof. Part of me was relieved. I mean, who in their right mind would want to come across something like that each night? But another part was, how do I put it? Curious. That park is not just a park for me anymore. It's become a personal journey of nature's endless mysteries, of secrets buried within herself, waiting to be unraveled. My day ends as usual, and the whistle of the night creatures begins. With a hot coffee keeping my senses wide awake, I leave my station with newfound respect for the night and its mysterious creatures. This one encounter, as spooky as it was, has changed my outlook towards my job and life in general. Thank you for letting me share this.